So I'll call us to order at 6.05. Um, before we get started, I wanted to let everybody know that Lynn Cole is not here yet, so we're going to just uh, move along on the agenda, and when he comes in, we'll stop and let him do his presentation. Uh, and we'll hold off on our executive session till late, till the end of the meeting. Okay. All right. Is there any public comment at this time? Okay. Seeing none, we'll keep moving along. Move down to the consent agenda. I'll make it work. <laughs> All right. I'll second. Louis made a motion. Who made the motion? Louis? Louis okay. to um, accept the consent agenda and seconded by Brad. All right. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. We move down to executive limitations monitoring. Um, the update for the financial report was included in the packet. Does anyone have any questions? No? I do not. You do not. All right. We'll move right along. How about update uh, for the food service was included as well? Any questions? I was wondering, is the, um, it was the, let's see, the state, um, I guess I had a, a couple of questions. One about deferred revenue. Is that so are you looking at the food service due from the state? Yeah. Or are you looking down at the deferred revenue? So the deferred revenue line of 89,174, that is the, the contribution, so the 195, that 89,174 is what's left of the 195 contribution that's made from, from all the schools. Which, so that's a little less than half, and we're a little more than halfway through the year, so we're pretty much right on track. Okay. And then, so yes, the other question had to do with, do from the state, so that's just their... Just revenue that we're anticipating from the state. Specifically towards... Nutrition. Yep, exactly. So that's is that the total amount that we get from the state in a given year? I'd have to double check to see if that's the total or if that's uh, the balance of what is left from what we expect. I'm not certain of that. Any other questions? Brad? Uh, hang on. I have a sister. One more second. Uh, this went out. Um, this went out just before that, or simultaneously. Okay. So we do. We have about 110 responses mm -hmm. to the the survey monkey, mm -hmm. um, and so at, the, at our next admin team meeting, we'll be looking at those results and incorporating that feedback into redrafting those goal statements. Is that survey closed now, or is it open? Until it is not. It's still open. Basically, we, we left it open until we have our meeting scheduled to, to meet, which actually was this past Monday. We didn't have school, so <laughs> right. I think it's maybe the week after vacation or the week after that, so there's still some time now to, to keep collecting some, some information. 110 is a good number. Yeah, and it's definitely like it has trailed off. We haven't had okay. many more, um, more people respond recently. So we have the bulk of what we would expect to get now. How many members of the steering committee and action team do you have so far? So the, the steering committee, we're anticipating membership of 12 to 14 people in total, um, with broad representation from community, board, students, uh, support staff, professional staff, administrative staff. Um, 
And right now we have enough applicants to fill all those positions, um, except for the student and support staff positions. So we need to continue to drum up a little bit of interest in those two areas to try and round out the kind of representation we want on the team. Um, and the action teams won't form until we've defined the goals. So the goals are still in draft form. Once we've solidified those goals, then we can put out um, those goal statements and ask for interest in being a member of an action team for one of those goals. And those will be more like six to eight people, probably. Do you have an idea of how many action teams would be formed? Uh, so right now there are four draft goals. So assuming we um, stick with four goals, there'd be four teams. Um, and I've set out from the beginning, three to four is what we want. I think if we start getting into many different goals and many different action teams, we create a plan that probably isn't feasible in the time frame that it's intended to be, which is five years. So, so three to four is for sort of just, just to keep it manageable. Is this survey being promoted? I mean, I, I didn't think 110 did sound like a lot to me. Um, and when's your meeting? Uh, we're still a couple of weeks away probably now. Right. But it's been on, uh, I think it went out on Facebook, Front Porch Forums, on the website. I emailed directly out to all the um, all a &E staff. Yeah. I think it probably went directly to board members as well. Um, so it's essentially the same kind of advertising we've done for any other survey. Mm. Although in other surveys we have gotten more feedback. We've had you know, two or three hundred um, folks responded. This is an important one. There might be a little survey fatigue, or I don't know, but it could be. The feedback we're getting, it's a, we're getting a lot of good feedback, so it's really useful information right. just from fewer people than certainly we would wish to have them. Yeah. Well, we'll do our part All right. to promote it. Thank you. Any other questions around the strategic? Okay, well, um, I'm going to stop where we are because Lynn's here and we, <laughs> he doesn't want to sit through our whole meeting to have a chance to, to fill us in. So. You should make me. <laughs> so. Good evening, everyone. I apologize for being and late. We have <coughs> well. Oh, you have those? Yes. Oh, so. great. Um, has the board? Had those, sir? No, uh, not yet. Okay. Not yet. So. Where would you like me? Wherever. You, right. We have a camera there, so. <laughs> oh, make sure you get your good side facing yeah. the camera. <laughs> okay, I'll stand over in front of this person. <laughs> Short time. Ago. Short time. Ago. So, Lynn's here to give us a, a, a presentation on the Hannaford Career Center. And typically, this happens at the Mount Abraham meeting, but. Um, this year we're going to try something different because it, you know, really is of interest to everybody in the district. So, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to hand these out. Or, or we can leave them here, people. Okay. Four members okay. This is our annual report, uh, and you should have all, all the residents of Addison County, uh, the three supervisory unions that we service at the Hanford Career Center, should have gotten a, a note card in your uh, mailboxes a couple weeks ago, several weeks ago. And if you want one of these, you can stop by either the superintendent's office or you can um, stop by my office down in Middlebury and pick one of these up. But it's the full report. Uh, tonight, uh, I have some extra copies of these also. If, if I don't have enough for everyone, but if you'd like to take one, pass them around. That's fine. Uh, as you, uh, so now, let me get oriented here a little bit. Uh, my name is Lynn Cole. I'm the director and superintendent of the Hanford Regional School District, which encompasses all three of those supervisory unions. And the, our major role is to provide career and technical education for uh, good people of Addison County. Uh, mostly we do that on site at the main office or our main building in Middlebury. Uh, but we have uh, also some um, satellite programs out of Grand <coughs> Junior High School. Uh, we are doing some distance learning through Vermont Technical College, and uh, we are sharing staff uh, between different tech centers uh, across the state for uh, 
our human service programs, our forestry and natural resources programs, uh, and our medical professions programs. Okay? So that's kind of a brief introduction. Uh, I will say that uh, this is my last year at the Hannaford Career Center. I've been there 15, and uh, I think that it's probably time for me to, to uh, seek other challenges, and I think it's probably time for the Hannaford Career Center to have a change in leadership. We've probably been one of the more stable uh, leadership uh, teams. Um, most of the folks that work in my office have been there a very long time, including myself, and uh, also our assistant director, uh, Kelly Mills, and Dean of Students has been there. She's raised up through the ranks. So yeah, I think that the Hanford Career Center is in very good hands, uh, and I think we are in very good shape uh, in terms of delivering what our mission is, and that's to provide uh, workforce education and training to uh, both uh, high school students and the adults of Addison County. A lot of people don't realize but we as career centers are the only entity in the state of Vermont that are uh, mandated by legislation to provide workforce development training. Um, it's not the colleges, it's not the high schools, it's the, it's the career centers. So we take this, um, that process very seriously and we serve you know, between three and 500 adults uh, in a variety of programs to improve their um, workforce skills during the course of any single year. We usually have around 300. Our enrollment in our high school programs this year, our enrollments are down. Um, we also work on a six semester average, which uh, does, uh, and, and it, uh, by the way, this is just the visual. Um, but it decreases our, our FTE counts. And the reason that is, is every tech center in the state of Vermont has a drastic decrease in the number of enrollments during spring semesters. Uh, we had 165 full-time equivalent students in the fall. We're down to just a little over 100 in the spring. So, and for us, a, a full-time equivalent student is really two students, so that's about 120 students that we lost between fall enrollment and spring enrollment. Uh, and because we're on the six-semester rotating average, that those averages go in as we as we compute, and I'll go through that a little bit here tonight. Uh, and so it looks like we're serving very few students, and it's really expensive. If you just did it, we're, we have a bill before the legislature right now that's coming out of my professional organization, the, the Tech Center Directors Association, that is saying, let's just count fall enrollments. We'll do the three years, but let's just count fall, fall enrollments. That would increase our full-time equivalents by uh, probably 30 or 40 students. And so if you do that math, all of a sudden, we're not looking so bad. So that's my it. You have an agenda before you. Uh, I'm just going to go through these pages, and it's a lot of numbers. And I'll bet I have these in weird order. No, I don't. Um, so the first sheet is our, our budget. It's, it's kind of sprinkled out in terms of broad um, kinds of, of uh, categories. And it, it looks at our, uh, our uh, relevant revenue. Our budget that we're taking to the voters, that'll be on town meeting day, all of you get an opportunity to vote on our budget, is $3,482,000. I like to say it, it costs about $3.5 million to provide career and technical education to the residents of Addison County, and we'll get to some of those figures. Um, so then we start breaking that down. We have some, some revenues that are kind of local or state. We have a Perkins grant, which is a federal grant uh, that comes to us. So those kind of um, non-categorical revenues brings us to, you know, 296000 So we subtract that off before we start figuring. Our multiplier is 134. 0.89 full-time equivalent students. To get to that, we have to have twice that many students. Um, 
We, we have a base payment of 87% of the base payment that comes to the high school. That comes directly to us on behalf of the students that attend the Art Center via Mount Aid. In addition to that, we get a 35% tuition reduction because I think the state legislature recognizes that career and technical education because of safety concerns uh, in terms of how many students we can have in a class plus the fact of the equipment that we need uh, is, is a more expensive delivery model. So that comes straight to us. Those, those two are added up, taken out. Uh, so then we come up with a uh, estimated tuition per FTE of, of 11,925. That isn't going to cover it all. So then we have to have a local assessment of 12,219, which is a reduction of about 200. It's a reduction of 293 dollars, almost 300, or a 2.4 percent reduction. That's the tuition or the assessment. Uh, to Mount Aid. Um, our total um, technical center tuition charge uh, for next year, based on this budget, is $20,162 per FTE. Okay? I'm moving very quickly. If there's a question, please stop. It. Sure. FTE, uh, we use that term for uh, teachers. Sure. Uh, so, so it's kind of confusing, but you're, you're talking about, so, so you say you have 134 FTE, but generally that, that's the sixth, so sixth most semester, of our, but you're at 300, you say, usually? Yeah, so, so let's, let's just take that. And that's uh, for five, five high schools? Three. three. We three. serve okay. three, three high schools. We get a few kids from uh, Otter Valley. We have some homeschool wow. students. We have some adults without diplomas. Uh, but our three main high schools are Mount Abe, Virgins, and Middle Middlebury. How many, uh, what, what's that total? Do you have to know? Just all roughly. How many what? To have 300 students out of the pool of for the three high schools is. I, I've got to say, I, I think that I used to say about 1,500. Is that right, Patrick? Yeah. I think it's a little higher than that. Virgins, I think, is about 900. Oh, uh, no, actually, that's the no, most no, high. Virginia, Virginia. Gonna be, yeah, so that's probably Virginia's closer to 15. 200, 300. Uh, Mount Avis, 450. Middlebury's 5. So there's 9. Um, yeah, I'm going to say 1,200, 1,300 students. And that's 13, 14%. We, yeah, but in reality, we're serving about 35% of the. Now remember, we serve primarily, especially from Mount Abe, eleventh and twelfth graders. Okay, we we serve very few ninth and tenth graders from Mount Abe. Um, we serve more ninth and tenth graders in Virgins and in Middlebury because we offer programs on site, so they don't have to buzz. Um, and most of our programs are half day. So if, even if at 134, you times that by two, and a lot of those students are only 80 minutes, so they're 0.33. So that's how we get to the 300. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you. I didn't mean to cut you off track. No, no. I, I appreciate right. the questions because I'm sure. Trying to get the numbers as the baseline here. So. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to move on. I don't want to take all mine here. The next thing, uh, sheet you'll see. And, and this goes to how many students are, and remember these are always full-time equivalent students. Um, in fact, the only full-day program we have is, is culinary. We have found that our full-day programs are, um, I don't think students have room in their schedules to do full days anymore. So those programs have, have gone, um, we've made most of them half days or options for half days. So you can see uh, Mount Abraham is sending us 32 full-time equivalent students for Jens 36, Middlebury 60, Otter Valley 3, and kind of boils that down. That comes up to that total of 134. This also tells you what your, your local assessments are going to be and, and uh, your baseline. So the um, base vocational that's coming to us from the state on behalf of Mount Age students, those 32 students, 
is 267,000, and then we're giving you a local assessment of 382,000. Okay? And you can do that. The other thing that this is really interesting for me is, uh, and probably for you, because it also tells you how many students are coming from each town within your supervisory unit. Uh, Bristol has 12.8, for example. Starksboro, 3.8. New Haven, 6. Um, it's really interesting to me that some of the smaller towns send up very high percentage of their students to the Hannaford Career Center. I shouldn't say they're sending them. Those students from small towns are attracted to the Hannaford Career Center. I, I think the best example of that is Little Addison. That's about every junior and senior that Addison has, that lives in Addison. Um, questions on that page? I, I, I have a question from the audience. Can I answer those? Or? Sure. I'm just not sure what you're It's okay. About. It's all right. We're, we're pretty laid back around okay. this part, so go ahead. Okay. Do you know what programs those smaller town kids are? I don't have that information. We have the largest agriculture program in the state of Vermont. Uh, in fact, that's we have uh, one ag teacher in Virgins and three in Middlebury. And if you count our diesel teacher, that would be four. So um, I, you know, I'd say that that's probably a big draw because it's a big farming community. But, I, 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 you know, we have kids in ART Performance Theater from Madison, too, so it's, it's a pretty diverse group. Right. But overall, can, can you say how many of the 134 are in Ag? Um, I could, but I didn't bring that with me. Okay. <laughs> but it's your most popular program. Is it half? Um, no. no, I'd say that our most popular, well, uh, both of, we have two programs. We have three campuses. We have our main campus, uh, which, by the way, I'll put in a plug because it's not going to be snowing tomorrow night. And our open house showcase is tomorrow night. And if you has anybody ever been to that, uh, and it's great, uh, you will see a lot of cool stuff. But we have three campuses. We have our main campus. We have North Campus, and we have. Um, our, our, our two programs out in Virginia. The programs that are most popular are the ones that are at our North Campus facility. And I believe that it's because they feel like it's a college campus. It looks like a college campus. It feels like a college campus. Uh, they're, they're not distracted by everything that's going on in the schools. And those programs have, since we moved out there, have been our most popular programs. The, the other programs that are very popular on our main campus are um, um, digital media. I'm getting it wrong. Do you know that one? Graphic design. Graphic design is our, and visual communications are our two most popular on campus. Uh, our ag programs have been pretty healthy, especially, especially sustainable agriculture. Um, both of our foundations programs out in Virginia have been, especially our engineering program out there has been really, really popular. We, we have waiting lists for it. In fact, I just got, as I was coming out here, I got a text message from the principal saying that she would like to add a section, which is kind of nice. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm just, I should know, but where is the North Campus? North Campus is uh, off of Exchange Street on Manelli Road. So if you're coming in, you go past uh, Mountain View Equipment, you take a right on Exchange Street, go down where it makes the big curve. If you take a right there, it's Manelli Road. Yes? Does your Virgins outposts take all students, or is that just for Virgins? It's just for Virgins. I, they're not opposed to taking other students, um, but it. But most of what we offer there, we offer at our main campus. So for for 
Mount Abe kids, it's like six one and a half a dozen the other. Those are our 75 minute classes. Most of our classes for juniors and seniors are two hours. Um, uh, the next one is just a, a breakdown of what those tuition costs have been over the last one, two, three, five years. I'm not going to go into that. There's a lot of numbers there. Um, probably the most important one, I would look at the six semester averages. As you can see, pretty much for all schools, those are going down. Um, those are reflection of a pretty drastic decrease of the high school um, census for all three high schools. Um, we still, our percentage of students we're serving has actually gone up, um, but we're, we're experiencing that decline in enrollment, just like the high school chart. So, I don't know if there's any real questions there. Um, the next page is our budget history. It's, um, it's, there was one year that I think is an oddity, uh, but and that's 14-15. Uh, but generally speaking, it, it's it's you know those graphs are kind of deceiving. The amount of money actually between all of those budgets are fairly um, fairly smooth actually. Um, the, I think it's the final one, yep. is our FTEs for that same period of time. Uh, we had 156, we're down to 134. Uh, and as I said, like in the fall this year, we had a really high census, about 165 kids. Uh, but it's, you know, we're going to drop because our, we have a real, we have the lowest census since I've been there this spring. So I open it up for a few questions and then nothing hard. Okay, I won't. <laughs> okay. um, why is the why do you have so much fewer um, things in the spring? I think it's uh, it's a combination, but I think the main one is local graduation requirements. Um, so in the fall they're like, oh well, it doesn't matter, I can deal with it in spring. Instead of, and then in the spring they have to do it. And then in the spring, it, oh, if I'm going to graduate, I have to go take this math class. Or, um, we this year we, um, you know, if kids will come to us instead of just saying, oh, I got to take this class, so I'm dropping. We can usually work something out for them, but they don't usually do that. <laughs> they usually just like, you know, it's kind of black and white, and that's what we got to do, so we got to go do it. Um, but it's mainly because of that we're having more students, which I think is really, really intriguing, that are taking a bunch of programs, and those students are doing <coughs> remarkable things with their lives. Mm -hmm. They're taking a, you know, they might go down and take an adult welding class, and then they might take an engineering course, and they, you know, take a sustainable lab course, and they just kind of put that all together to design kind of what they want to do with their lives. And, and those students have been, been really successful. The, the largest hog farmer in the state of Vermont is one of our students, and he graduated two years ago. Um, yeah. That's fine. Can I ask why two of the three high schools in the district have on-site programs and one doesn't? Um, we have attempted. Uh, that just has never, and we have attempted that through through several different administrations. Um, so I, I I guess you would have to go there because uh, uh, I mean we we have um, written programs up. Uh, we have talked to administration, uh, not present administration. I, I will add that caveat. But, uh, I was wondering if it was space or. Um, no, I don't think it's a space. I mean, we have it in Virginia because they were going to cut the program. Uh, and we said, we'll, we'll come in and, and, and we will administer it and, and we will take on those teachers. 
Uh, so we took the hit in our budget, said them taking the hit in theirs. Uh, and then it worked out pretty well. It became a great relationship. They feel really good about it. Now, I don't know that they always did, and there's been some bumps and things. Part of it is the way the financing works. Uh, uh, and if there was something that I would want to do, and I'm, I'm working really pretty hard this year, to change the way that career technical education is funded, because I think that there is the appearance that, that the money follows the student, and when they leave Mount Abe or they leave for Gens, they're, they're, they're losing money. And I've tried very hard over my careers to come to places like this and say, listen, this is what it costs. And whether you have it here or there, you know, this is what it costs. Um, and um, I, I don't think I've been successful in that. To, you know, it, it is spread out. Act, Act 130 caused that money to be spread out over the course. So it's, it's, a, and it's an assessment to the school, and it goes across all of your students. So it, it, um, it's not really based on the number of kids coming. It's based on the number of kids. The good job. Yes. Um, when you think about the, the kids that you were talking about that come down and, and do this myriad kind of mm -hmm. grouping, how does how do you feel like that ties into the whole state's uh, kind of slant towards individualized learning? I, we're working very very hard, uh, and actually we're we're being um, we're being tutored in proficiencies, proficiency-based education by two uh, teachers from uh, a Union High School, which we're really pleased about. They're doing a great job. Um, but what we want to do is say, what would a, what would a, what would a CTE concentrator look like? What are the standards that we would want that person to show? And if they showed them and they could do that wherever it is within our program, then we would bless them and send them on their way. Uh, because we are finding that those kids that are, what, some, of our, some of our most successful students are those that have never completed a program. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying that we don't have successful students that have completed programs, but, but um, they're, they're, some of those kids are really remarkable. Um, I, I, they're fun. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's education doing it right. And they want to school. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Um, are there any particular program areas where you are, uh, you know, not covered, where there's demand that you're not meeting yep. uh, specifically? Yep. Uh, technology uh, programming. Um, technology, like, I feel pretty good edge. about. Uh, the construction trades, I don't feel very good about, uh, and I don't feel very good about uh, advanced manufacturing. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to run those programs. Uh, the, the struggle that you have at high school uh, is that you kind of have to offer programs that high school kids like to take so that you keep your doors open, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We have avoided offering some of those programs because I just don't think that they're high wage, high, high demand jobs. Now if you offer a job in, or if you offer a program in coding, and you might get two or three kids. We'd love to offer that, but I can't make that sustainable. We had a, a, a building trades program. We, we lost it because we didn't have enrollment. Uh, but, and I was going to bring them, I was rushing out of my truck so quick, but there is a new study out uh, uh, through the Department of Labor talking about the high wage, high demand, the most, the most sought after employment in in the state of Vermont, and we line up pretty well, um, but we we should be training more plumbers, more electricians, um, and, and more advanced technology, um, megatronics, those kind. If you look, the biggest growing businesses around Addison County are the adult beverage and food manufacturing businesses, and all of that equipment is being run by folks that know megatronics and that advanced manufacturing, robotics. Uh, we, do, uh, we do CNC programming, and we're the only program in the state that is, is doing that at any level. We're, we're at, um, and, you know, um, and, we, and we do CAD, you know, computer-assisted drafting. 
so you know we do some of that um, but I, I would like us to be doing more in advanced manufacturing and obviously the trades uh, concern me a great deal there's a huge demand right now for for carpenters um, so. Yes, sir. So this the CNC training that you do. What I mean, if it, you don't have the building arts or the trades, what umbrella does that fall under? We're that, putting we're putting it under engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's in the engineering cluster, uh, the CNC program. Yeah, um, it, it's you know manufacturing or engineering. Engineering can cover a lot of a lot of stuff. Um, I think we should look at career centers as places for adults that high school students can go to. Because I think if we build a program for megatronics for adults, we'd fill it. Uh, we're, we're educating, I know we're doing about 50 LNAs a year through our adult program. Uh, we have a collaboration for or, or, uh, video conferencing, um, and we run the lab. The classes are ran out of our building, uh, and that's probably another 10 LPNs and another 8 RNs that are being educated through the Career Center. Um, so that one we've got. That's a high demand, fairly high paying. Um, and the students in there are, are great when we talk to them. They, every time they see me, they, they're so grateful to have it right there where they don't have to drive to Randolph or up to Williston. And, you know, these are young, young women with children. And they're working full time. You know, it's, it's pretty difficult for them to make that trans, you know, drive a couple hours. I think my assumption about the Career Center has been that while these are really specific and might lead to something, that they're hands-on skills that are transferable. Do you, is that true, or are they so specific that they're really specific to a certain No, in fact, I think career. we try to make them less specific. Um, we're, we're graduating 17 to 20 um, auto technicians a year. Uh, a lot of those want to stay local, and a lot of those are working in the, the dealerships and the garages in Addison County. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes we teach them about cell phones. <laughs> God, I'm making a mess out of it tonight. <laughs> I'm so like my cell phone. Was up. Um, <laughs> so I guess I'm, I'm coming because I'm, I'm, I'm say, asking this because my son's chosen the least employable lighting technician <laughs> you know, one, and, and I'm thinking that that's something that is touching on electricians and the other right. other fields yeah um, yeah I, I did talk about ART I'm very proud of ART because ART does something that no one else does ART trains more women welders than any program in the state of Vermont. Bar none. There are more women welders, more young women learning to weld at ART than any program we have. All right? Um, we could run an elect electronics course, or we could run an electrical course. They're going to learn electricity from there. They're going to learn electronics in our auto and our diesel. They get college credit in auto and diesel for electronics. Okay, so then they can go to Green Mountain Beverage, or they can go to um, um, Cabot. If you if you go down to Cabot, most of the most of the technicians at Cabot that are running their advanced manufacturing are our students, our former students, and it, and they were in video technology, and they were in um, automotive. Um, so you know we. We feel welding's really important. That's, I'd say probably half of our students learn welding. Um, you know, you can always make a living welding. Uh, and we teach uh, electronics in pretty much every one of our programs, and it's really high in automotive and diesel. And our diesel students are, are some of the best students in, in the United States. Uh, 
when we go to uh, Skills USA, um, we used to have the state champion every year. Um, tractor troubleshooting contests, we, we went in, usually we win first, second, third, and fourth, we go really deep in that. Um, we have kids going on full ride scholarships to, um, to different colleges, uh, in, in competitive scholarships. So um, we're, we're pretty proud of, of what we're doing. Taking a lot of time, so just shut me off. That's all right, I'll take one more. <laughs> One more question? Tomorrow night? Go. Benita. I just, more than a, a question, it, it's more <coughs> like a, a statement. Let me just say that I've known Lynn for a long time in many different ways, and they, it's going to be, they're going to miss him down there. I'm sure you're going to hire somebody fabulous, don't get me wrong, but they're going to miss you down there the same way that you miss Mark Rubier here tonight. So. That's right. <laughs> we don't have all the glitz and glamour. That's right. That's right. Hey, telling me to turn off my cell phone. Um, well, thank you. Those are very kind words. It's true. Um, and I, I looked at the stuff that the board put together for my replacement, and either I was unbelievably gifted or I didn't do anything. <laughs> anyway, thank, thank you. I thank you all. Tomorrow night. One of the big events in Addison County, the Hanifer, Hanifer Career Center Showcase, two campuses, great food, and I understand we're going to have some some uh, English speaking servers tomorrow night. So, so thank you. Very much. I'll let you back to your board. Thank you. Thanks, Allison. As representative to the Hannaford Career Center, do you want to give a, a brief update to everyone while they're here? Um, sure. Uh, typically, um, this also happens at the Mount Abraham Board, but I think now that everybody is rich in the, that knowledge, we'll, we'll share <laughs> the rest of it with them. Okay. Um, I have some handouts. These are the past four board meetings that we've had, um, updates. I'm not going to go through everything. And, Lynn gave you a really good synopsis of uh, what the center does. And what I'm going to do is just update you on the superintendent search. Um, we've been meeting since December to determine what we need to do and everything. So we have um, last, last week, the 8th of February, we really nailed down uh, what we're going to do. And Bob Stevens is helping us with the search committee process. Um, Katrina, yeah. So um, we are going to hire a full-time um, superintendent, and we're not going to have the director part in that title. Um, and we've had a lot of conversations and discussions about things that have been going on and how we want things to go forward. Um, so essentially, we're going to do a, have a search for a full-time superintendent. Um, we have a screening committee that will be composed of various people and on the back of the sheet it gives you the um, breakdown of from where we're pulling people and I'm the chair of the screening committee so um, we have three board members two teachers from the Hannaford Career Center uh, one administrative staff person uh, one person from the administration one person from the contract staff um, we'll get one of the high school students who attends and one of the adult learners who attends and then a note has gone out to all three superintendents of the sending schools to um, appoint someone or have someone volunteer to serve as a representative from each of the districts and um, we'll have an ad go out shortly um, today. did it go out today okay because um, we were working on that. Um, and our charge is to bring forth some candidates from the applicant pool to the board to interview, and um, hopefully we'll get one good qualified candidate. Large, large, very big shoes to fill. Oh. <laughs> um, I've been the Mount Abra on that board for pretty much a year now, and um, it's a fantastic place, and I'm so glad that I'm sitting on that. And um, you've done a tremendous job getting us to where we are. 
and we're going to do our best to continue that and grow it, hopefully, in, in the vision that you had, too. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you. So that's that. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Lynn. Thanks, Lynn. Okay. Now we'll pop back into our agenda. We were under executive limitations monitoring. Um, we are down to D and uh, to accept the interpretation of 2.2 treatment of staff and 2.3 financial condition and activities. And I'm going to double check with uh, Elin and Brad that as this is our, is this the stage where we're taking, we're accepting the interpretation and still getting feedback? Or? I thought feedback was over on this. Okay. But I, I did. didn't go to the last meeting. Uh, <laughs> uh, is, that, is that your, your yeah. we're done with feedback. This is, ex we've taken the feedback, we've applied it or, not, or discussed it. And if needed, applied it to the entire. You've been right. So, so essentially, the opportunity for feedback to come to me on these drafts from local boards has happened, and um, then incorporated that feedback into the drafts that are before you tonight, for you to deem either reasonable interpretations or not. Okay. Assuming they are reasonable, that gives me the green light to then write the report. actually write the report for the following meeting. Okay. If not reasonable, then I make changes and present a new, hopefully more reasonable, interpretation <laughs> next month. All right. It's so I move we accept the interpretation of 2.2 and 2.3. All right. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll second. Louis. Gladly. Louis. Very reasonable. <laughs> All right. Any, any further discussion? Brad? I just wondered, Patrick, you know, the possible evidence around staff surveys and quarterly communications and a couple of the other bullet points where you were interacting with employees. Do you, do you think that's going to happen? I have a draft survey for staff, uh, three quarters finished already, in Excellent. anticipation of the acceptance of my reasonable interpretations. Okay. So I hope to be able to send that out in the next few days so that I can receive that feedback and include that as evidence in the monitoring report that you'll see next month. Sure. So, yes. Excellent. Great. Any other questions? Comments? Anyone else have comments? All right. All those in favor of accepting the interpretation for 2.2 .2 treatment of staff and 2.3 financial condition activities, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any All right. Moving on. Uh, we are now to the board management and governance section in your path. Well, I don't know if it was in your packet. I think it came afterwards. Did you did you all get to see the bargaining council update? Okay. I think it I think it came after too. I can read it briefly for um, the bargaining council update. Professional staff and support staff work groups continue to meet and make progress using the critical issues bargaining negotiation method, led by mediators from the Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service. The next full bargaining council meeting will be on March 9th at 6.15 at Bristol Elementary School. At that meeting, presentations will be made regarding health care options for the new negotiated contract. Any questions? All right. Um, the update for the policy and governance. That one was enclosed. I think, so. I think that one was closed. So. Any questions? No? Any questions? All right. Moving on. Uh, update the VSBA enclosure. That was, again, in the packet. And Mary, Mary there was some. Is this the stuff that happened? There were two in the packet that I looked at, mm -hmm. or when I looked in the folder, there were two there. There were two there. Okay. I want to make because something came afterwards. Yeah. Let's see. Right here, let's give them this one because I think one yeah, came afterward. Okay. I don't see this one. Okay, this is a, there is another update. Is 
looks like January. One went in yesterday, had, I think. Yeah, they had two more meetings. <laughs> so as part of ongoing board education, the VSBA updates can offer a lot of information. Um, everybody should be receiving their little boardroom book. You can get it by mail or an electronic version. If you're not getting it in an email, um, let me know and I can get word to the VSBA to, to check on why you're not receiving it. Moving along, um, next is the update on the Central Office Construction Committee. Um, I'm going to ask because I just realized that I don't have the redone um, charge. <laughs> so can we table that until the next, till we meet again when I have the charge? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> All right. Uh, next is the discussion of uh, recognition of retiring board members. We talked about that at the last meeting, um, and I sent an email out, but I didn't get a lot of response, so we're not prepared to do it tonight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to touch back with everybody and, and say um, we, could, we can still do it. We just have to get more organized and know who's not coming back. Okay. Uh, next is the ac action item is to accept the monitoring reports for 3.4 monitoring the superintendent's performance that came out afterwards and you probably got three emails about it because I was having document issues <laughs> I guess I would just, so you're, you were finding of non-compliance on the first mm -hmm. item. Right. It's really due to not enough time having elapsed. Correct. Correct. Just, that's, but I, but I, I couldn't really say we were in compliance because we weren't. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really, and the plan is that in the, when we get to where we have a year, that we all understand that we will be looking at the monitoring reports to evaluate the performance, and so um, we, but don't, we don't have a partial compliance. Did we we kind of we talked about said, that. We, we talked we, right. We, we talked just, about <laughs> how whether it would be partial, non. If so, and we decided it would be compliant right. or non-compliant. Right. And if it was non-compliant, what was the plan to get you to compliant? So, any other? No, I think you did a good job. Yeah. Thank you. Very good job. Any, anyone else have any questions? All right. So, anyone willing to, to uh, make a motion? To, uh, I'll move it. All right. Brad. Three, four, and four. I'm sorry, four. Uh, oh, four do you want to do four or four? four. She, he, he's got four or four here as well. You can move them both at the same time. Um, sure, I'll move uh, to accept the interpretations and uh, monitoring reports for three, four, and four, four. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? No. Any discussion out here around three, four, three point four, and four, four, four point four? All right. All those in favor of accepting your monitor board monitoring reports 3.4, monitoring the superintendent's performance, and 4.4, school board chair roll, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. But I have a question. Sure. So we, it seemed that in an email I saw this, but it wasn't, it's not in our local board agendas. 
So 3.4 is one that is only for this committee. Correct. But f so we don't have that on the local committees, but 4.4 .4 is something we're supposed to address and begin tonight, even though it isn't on the local ones. We all want to add it. Right. Correct. So at the beginning of your, before you begin your meeting, the first course of action would be to add 4.4, .4, and then you can discuss it and um, make a plan with your local board about who's going to do the report and then get it in motion for the next meeting. Okay. Okay? All right. Okay. Um, Brad or Elin, do you have the Survey Monkey link up on your computer that we could go through that? We didn't talk about it in the beginning. Yeah, did you want to do that before? We skipped that. Um, I was thinking if we did the, after the, the survey. And we could do the comment and then we could just. Yes. Okay. I, I do as well. Right. <coughs> you want to read through it? Do you want to read now? Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, you read, Brad. All right, well, we have the date of the meeting <laughs> <laughs> and the name of the person completing the assessment. <laughs> Question three. What is the level of engagement of all board members? High, low? No medium. No medium. No. <laughs> High. Hi. <laughs> all right. Was the agenda followed? Yes. Definitely. Yes. That's a yes or no. Sufficient. Uh, was the agenda, was the agenda agenda linked to the board's annual work plan? Yes. Was there sufficient board time spent on community linkage? No. No. <laughs> no. The questions to, you know, went to community, I thought, to some degree, uh, tonight to the to Lynn. Yeah. Um, you know, if he wasn't here, I would probably say no. But. I'm a yes on that. I guess I have a question relevant to that on the survey monkey. Did that go into all five town front porch forums? Because I, I didn't put it in on the cards. I should have. That was the intent. I didn't follow up to see that it happened in every front porch forum for every town. But that was the. Since it's open for another week at least, I'll mm -hmm. make sure that it goes in. Great. It happened in Moncton. I saw it, it in the Moncton yeah. one. It happened in Starsboro. Okay. It, it did, okay. Still. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Was there sufficient board time spent on ends discussion? <clears throat> center was but not explicitly what how do you rate that one again if Lynn wasn't here I would I'm a no <laughs> but he's saving us <laughs> yeah I think he did this yeah. time <laughs> um, was there sufficient board time spent on executive limitations I think so I would say so sure yeah. we had the Was the consent agenda used appropriately? Yes. Yes. Yep. And finally, oh, I'm sorry. And Brad, you've got the pay orders in front of you, too. I do? Yeah. Okay. Hiding behind you. Uh, <laughs> uh, what went well? Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I thought the uh, board and the other participants' questions were evenly mixed. And, about that it seems to be going smoothly. Yeah. Um, what concerns do we do you have with the meeting? Where the heck are our missing members? <laughs> <laughs> it's cold and flu season. <laughs> and last question. Is it yes? How could the meeting be improved? Yeah, no yeah. All right. Who's missing? 
Rebecca, Rebecca and Mary Kate. Okay, that's what I had. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we we are in need of an executive um, session. So I'm going to take public comment and then we'll take our executive session because we didn't have it at the beginning of the meeting and have it at the end of the meeting. When we come out, we will, um, the only action we'll be taking is to adjourn. And then um, we're going to break up into the, our individual local meetings, which do you want to run down where the meetings are going to happen so that if people want to move to that area or they want to stay, board sure, members can stay. <coughs> For the executive session, but if anyone else wants to move to where the meeting will be, that's fine. So the Mount Aid board meeting is going to be right here, um, and then the large cap, um, there's sort of sections um, set up there. So Robinson, um, as you enter, you'll be furthest um, in the back corner to the left, do Lincoln back corner um, to the right, and we'll do uh, Bristol front corner to the right. Uh, New Haven, you'll be in the center, and that leaves Moncton, front and left. So, um, for this executive session, the um, board members can say that I don't know if you want anybody else to stay. <laughs> Uh, I don't have any strong feelings. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, are you still was taking that? questions? Yeah. Start signing. Yeah. Um, so, um, is there any public comment? Yeah. Um, so, in our board evaluation, we have the question: Did we evaluate? Did we adhere to our ends policy or whatever? However, that's worded. I think we need to incorporate that into our agenda somehow, so that we are analyzing our ends policies. So in the sur survey, in the survey, oh. right? So we, we do our board business, but we're not evaluating our ends policies. There must be some way that we can do an overall quick analysis. There's got to be some way that we can do that because it's turning into we're answering no to that question all the time. Right. Because <laughs> we're doing board business, but we're not evaluating our end policies. So that's a concern. Right. It's either an inappropriate okay. question somehow, or there needs to be a way to get at it. The ends will have a place every year for the ends monitoring report. But right. the question being, what, what more beyond the ends monitoring report should or shouldn't happen? Might be a good question at the next policy so government's meeting. meeting. Yeah, I can see that. All right. Like I said, board members are welcome to stay for this executive session if you'd like. Um, we'll ask our visitors, though, to leave. So um, we are in need of um, an executive session under T. Title One BSA three one three A three the evaluation of an employee. Um, it's per our contract with our superintendent. It is um, spelled out in the uh, in the contract that by this date we we would have an evaluation. So um, that's what we'll be doing in executive session. I'll make the motion to go into executive session. Yeah. Second. For that purpose. All right. All right. So all those in favor of going into executive session for the purpose of Title I BSA 313A3 evaluation of an employee, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. And it's 709.